What's up everybody, Jeffrey McAvoy here. So good of you to be back. Welcome to the formal introduction to the channel about this new lemon that I bought. Um, now, no, it is not the new car for the missus. I bought this for myself. Laugh all you want. I think it's a cool little car, uh, despite the fact that it is uh, regarded as a Barbie mobile. Some might say rightfully so. Uh, although this one does come equipped with the uh, 184 brake horsepower, 1600 cc turbocharged engine. Bit of a twist from your regular Barbie mobile, I guess, uh, despite all the the fancy, glitzy, shiny bits and uh, some other ridiculous amenities that we'll talk about later. Um, the idea behind the purchase of this car was to find a decent replacement for my aging uh, BMW E34 530i Touring. Now, of all the cars that I've owned, this is by far my favorite my all-time favorite, all-round favorite. I've had uh, Opels, I've had uh, a whole bunch of BMWs, E30s, E36, a couple of E34s as well. And this is my favorite all-rounder. It's a joy to drive. It's uh, relatively rare, in fact, as well, with the uh, uh, three liter V8 and manual gearbox combination. The uh, cargo area is, is humongous and uh, too big, in fact, for what I really need. So hence why I chose the, the Clubman as a substitute. The other reason I uh, decided to uh, buy a more recent car is that I wanted uh, some trouble-free motoring for the next decade. <coughs> Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Hang on. This thing does sound like a diesel. Ah, shit. What is this here? Ah, shit. Yes. Yeah, ah, yeah, ah, oh, come on, really? What the hell, man? I have had, in fact, more trouble with this in the three weeks of ownership that I've had it uh, versus the five years of uh, daily driving this uh, three liter V8. Uh, BMW 5 Series. Now, not really two things you can compare, but um, there you go. I'll do it. Why the heck not? Regretfully, um, my BMW here has raked in uh, just over 250,000 clicks, and it's starting to really show uh, signs of wear. Uh, the uh, uh, dual mass flywheel is completely shot since over a year. Uh, I do have a replacement, uh, which is a single mass flywheel, a new clutch. I have a whole bunch of parts. I, I spent uh, a good deal of money on, on parts, which I never really have the opportunity to fit. I'm busy wrenching on other people's cars for a living. So it's kind of hard to find the time to wrench on my own, although that is uh, starting to change. Um, another problem which is starting to be uh, much more concerning is the fact that it's starting to consume a bit of water now um, that's probably indicating uh, the beginning of a head gasket failure uh, so that's pretty much a top end rebuild at the strict minimum and you know you guys know me and when i do things i do them to the fullest extent so it's highly likely that when i have to take the cylinder heads off you know, the thing has 250,000 clicks on it. Might as well do the bottom as well and get uh, a fresh engine in it. I'm not going to be able to do that now, sadly, but I am going to hang on to this car as l for as long as I can, because I absolutely love it. Uh, and it's probably, in fact, easier to find an E34 M5 Touring uh, than uh, one like this. So I'll definitely hang on to it. I absolutely love it. Loads of work to do it on it. It looks like an old banger, but uh, I love it. It's my favorite car in the whole wide world. Now, back to our lemon. This thing is riddled with problems. 
from the get-go. It was uh, the before last cheapest car on the market. I bought it in Germany. There's so many things that are wrong with it. It's, uh, I won't bore you with the whole list. I mean, I'll just make this uh, entire series uh, for you guys and you'll just discover it as we go. Now, first of all is the uh, engine diagnostics. So I had to buy a whole bunch of tools as well to, to be able to work with this car. So, um, yeah, engine diagnostics, uh, it has a, it's throwing up fault codes, it's going into limp mode all the time, it's downright pain in the ass, undrivable as it is, so that's the first thing that we're going to address. So let's dive right in uh, with the engine diagnostics to begin with, and you know, we'll just take it as it goes. Um, crack open a cold one, and um, raise your glasses to two of my subscribers who are having a bit of a hard time through life right now. So guys, just, you know, quick, shout out you know who you are uh, just to let you know that uh well my heart uh my heart goes out to you guys as well you know you've been supporting me since the beginning i'm highly grateful for that so you know it's the least i could do is to give you a, a bit a bit of a shout out um hopefully to cheer you up uh with this upcoming series so um thank you all so much for watching in any case and i'll be catching you all later Damn it! What the fuck, man? It's doing it again, like the half para thing. Why? What the fuck, man? Ah, so here we go. This handheld diagnostics tool seems to be uh, the one thing that you're going to need. When you buy such a recent car now, usually, you know, with classic cars, the computer that I use is located in between my ears right here and uh, it works fairly well. But to communicate with a car like this, this, uh, this definitely requires some, um, uh, like a translator. Uh, that's how I see it. This thing is a translator which translates the electronic signals put out by the car's uh, actuators and whatnot and translate them translate them into uh, this uh, like visual um, uh, interface how long has it been since you've seen a connector like this one huh like windows 95 all over again man where's what they call a key okay so this thing has already powered itself up through the obd plug okay here we go okay so the loading the data wow fantastic diagnosis here we go uh how about a quick scan yeah you do that this car's 10 years old it probably has more faults than my 25 year old bmw but okay junction box okay so not going to raise anything the dme is the one that's interesting for now the rest, I don't care. I just want this car to uh, run properly. So we're going to read the codes. What does it say? Combustion misfire, several cylinders, damaging exhaust gas. Oh no. Combustion misfiring cylinder number three. Now I knew that uh, when I pulled the spark plugs out. So freeze frame data, that's interesting. When did that happen for the first time? Not long ago. Right, at 132 kilometers, 680. 10 liters in the fuel tank, okay, it uh, on idle pretty much. Filtered rail pressure, that's good. 5.24 megapascals, that's good. P3, P0303, we'll look that up, okay. Okay, so that's the same, the same thing, okay. Interesting, interesting. Uh, how about the live data, let's see. I'd usually use my brain, but apparently uh, it's not good enough to communicate with this thing. Uh, misfire detection counter. Okay, here we go. Uh, select them all. Okay. And we need the engine to be running. So let's uh, start the engine. There we go. Oh, there it goes. 1, 12, 19, 27 misfires. Okay, so. It is clearly misfiring on cylinder number three. Rail pressure, okay, let's see the rail pressure. Okay, seven, okay, that's good. 
as you accelerate it goes up so uh, I can exclude high, f high pressure fuel uh, system which is good. That will find its spot in the glove box most definitely uh, because uh, I'm going to, <laughs> I feel that I'm going to need this quite a lot. Man, I bought this car thinking, you know, buy, buy a new car pretty much and be done with annoying uh, things and have something reliable. But uh, apparently it wasn't specifically the right choice, or well, at least the Mini Cooper Clubman R55 LCIS was not the best choice. So I got a set of new coils and it's literally a matter of pulling the old ones out. And shoving the new one in. Yes. That's perfect, great. How about we slap the plates on this thing and take it out for a spin, huh? So this Ford code could mean um, probably one of half a million things. And basically what it's telling me through the uh, diagnosis tool, I cannot see or hear what the exhaust fan also is doing communications have gone sometimes he speaks to me sometimes not he's gone crazy he's lost it he's he's plastered he's stone drunk somewhere under the bonnet we you know we've lost all communications with him so um, so I'll just put this default value and assume that we're running at a certain degrees you know which has been programmed by the guys who do that kind of stuff I'm going to do some research I'll look up the full codes in the computer uh, see what they actually mean and start uh, doing some analysis and testing and taking them from there. This information is interesting. We're closing in on the nature of this issue. Uh, we know now for sure that it is located within the exhaust vanos solenoid. So all that's left to do now is to test continuity in between the uh, wire at the arriving at the plug and the wires arriving at the ECU. In order to run diagnostics, you're definitely going to need a multimeter like this and these kind of probes. Now, obviously, I've disconnected the battery to start with and then unfasten, unfasten this thing here. There we go. So you're always going to want to disconnect the battery when uh, removing the connectors of the ECU. So there are the, the numbers here, one and two. So we're going to first test wire number one. The other one that we're looking for is on A1 and B2. And I believe that B2 is going to be this one. No, 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 that's wrong. It's this one, this one, B. So that's what I've got on my reader. And then move on to the next. And A41 is this one? Nope. That one? Nope. A41 is this one. There we go. So that's the reading right there. So we're good. So 
this continuity test uh, has a positive outcome. So we know that the wiring in between the, uh, the, the actuator and the ECU is in uh, perfectly good working order. So that's fantastic, that's good news. Now, although it looks relatively straightforward to change this solenoid out, I'm pretty sure it's a pain in the ass. So if I had to remove it just to check it, I might as well replace it altogether. Uh, this thing is 10 years old and apparently with cars of this standard, it's old, very old and needs to be replaced. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just, I'll just order one straight up. And as soon as I got it, we'll install it. about the swimming pool here later. <sighs> what I want now is to open the open the fucking door. Now this thing should be free and we don't have much room. We really don't have much room at all. Water ingress might come from there. No. Let's get this mirror in here. Can we see anything? No, we can't. Of course we can't. Thought it would be easy, huh? Well, it ain't. Uh, the latching mechanism is right about here. This is where it's supposed to be. Ah. That's about as good as it gets. Oh! Damn it. That's as good as it gets. There's the. F okay. Ah, yes, I can see. So I need to get a screwdriver in there. Man, I've had this car for a week. Give me a fing break, man. What the hell? We're gonna knock on wood and up this. Works, damn it. Jesus. Just shove that up there. There we go. Okay, so that leave my other hands free. There we go. Yes, sir. Okay. We're doing stuff. I do see a little ring part just there. I hear this trim piece is expensive, so I'll try not to break it if I can avoid it. You can either get the light in there or the mirror, but not the screwdriver. You know, because if things are too easy, then they're not fun. 
That's definitely it. Or is it? Am I just fucked up? I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm just fucking things up. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. I'm totally fucking it up. Look, man, if you design this, you're a fucking hole, man. God, son of a motherfucking piece of shit. I think I'll just fucking set a match to it. How about that? And I do see a place where water can fit. Huh. I'll be killing two birds with one fucking stone over here. This is fucking ridiculous. This is nuts, man. This car is not even 10 years old. I'm stupid at things like this. How are you supposed to do this? Did you design this, you moron? You suck. Man. Okay, so I just took like a five minute break. Took a breather and get back into it, huh? Okay, so. Right, this is too big. Okay, so let's try with this. 35 minutes with your head upside down in the boot of your car. There we go. Like that. Ah, yeah, 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 and that's the water ingress, most deaf. Yes, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at the light, look at the light, that's the water ingress right there. Okay, so no, it's not a bumper off operation. Look at that, look at that, that is the source not of my income but of the water in my boot. Here we go. Okay, so we are going to kill two birds with one stone. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you exactly um, what I did right here. And as you can see, I'm not the first person to be here. How interesting, how interesting. What the hell is this? Why in the world would anybody do that? I really don't know. <sighs> and definitely somebody has been here before because they did not use a proper Torx wrench. There we go. So, right, so here's the short version of it. Sorry, my neighbor is mowing. Um, there is a latch piece right here where there should be a cable. So while it's in the car, it's actually like so, with the door catch um, this way. So with this Allen uh, spanner, wrench as they call it, on the other side of the pond. Just go in, in here and push or pull, I can't remember. I can't even remember how I did it. Hang on. There you go. Pull it. Pull it open. There we go. So that's all there is to it. Um, what I'm going to do is to fit, I'm going to fit a cable I'm going to go and fetch um, a bicycle cable and I'm going to uh, fit it in here and it's going to work, it's going to be fine. So remember these two, these two little wires. So the yellow one is supposed to power. It's supposed to power. It's the signal from the switch, basically. This is the Earth. It is in a pitiful state. Uh, some moron has just cut into it to test. Okay. So uh, I've traced these 
back <laughs> into the real life cluster. So some dickhead clipped this black wire, okay, and used this as a power line, which goes, which goes all the way to the battery. F me, this is the, oh man, this is one from the battery. Okay, uh, goes all the way to the battery. And this yellow one is powered off, um, hang on. Goes on, this, this, this yellow one is a signal from the switch, I guess, because it goes into the loom here, into the door. Okay, and it goes all the way, uh, all the way here. Okay, so that's that one. And I do recall, hang on, I do recall uh, unplugging a, a suspicious red wire which was hooked up directly to the battery. Now, um, um, ah, yes, I see. Uh, there it is, there it is, there it is. So I'm pretty sure, let's just do it that way. <laughs> Who wants to bet that it's going to work now? Drum roll, okay, okay, so lock it here, and let me just hit that fucking switch. Me, man. Jesus fucking Christ, so that's what that power line was for, okay? Lesson learned. Right, well, now that uh, that problem has been solved, let's uh, take care of the 964th other issue with this vehicle. Listen carefully. Two things wrong right here. First, the, the uh, knocking sound, which is due to somewhere in the pedal right there, rubbing against something. See if I press, if I push that way, it disappears. Okay, and the other one. So the solution to this problem lies with these uh, little bushes. So. Ah, nuts and bolts. <laughs> so it's a T, T20, I should think. Ah, oh, yes, of course. T20, and what do we have here? Oh, somebody has been here before, huh? Definitely somebody else has been here before. Okay, and now, oh, there we go. So just uh, pull it out forwards. We're in the heart of the beast right now. So we are looking up, there is the, there's a the steering column right there, brake pedal here and clutch pedal. Clutch pedal. So we have to get actually way up there, undo a pin and, <laughs> and hope that it, uh, it uh, um, gets undone. Let me just, well, if you've owned a BMW before, it, it's going to be the same. Need to push it away and push it upwards. There are two ways of going about replacing this part. There's the easy way and the, uh, well, no, in fact, there is no easy way. Forget about it. Uh, it's kind of complicated to get in there with the camera. Now, when it comes to reinstating this part, uh, think outside the box if uh, if like me you don't have a box to begin with it'll uh, sprout right out but I, I just used four zip ties to compress this little uh, spring device thing so that's uh, pretty much it these four zip ties will help you uh, keep a bit of your sanity and uh, it's really the only way to put this back. Now, obviously I've greased everything on the way in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. If you get down there, you'll understand. What I can tell you for sure is that you do have to remove this part. Well, obviously it's in my hand. Uh, you, you can uh, simply unbolt the uh, clutch master cylinder, which holds in place with two 10 millimeter 
uh, nuts, you just release those a bit and you can push the pedal off, uh, off its little spindle and replace the bushings that way. Um, I use the Castrol red rubber grease to lubricate it all. And that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, uh, down I go. And I could have compressed that a little more, damn it. Never mind, it's fine, it's fine. Everything's fine, it's under control here. There we go. <laughs> yep. It's in there all right. Oh, why was I shouting? It's in there all right. Nice. Good, I'm a happy man. So this just pushes into here. Four locations, three screws down there. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I only get the shagging sound. We'll take care of that in another video. And no matter if I push that way. Good, this is good, man. It's actually good because the, uh, the pedal position is perfect for some good old heel and toe action, which is, which is nice. I like that. Right, so that job was a bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, not so bad, in fact, uh, and definitely worth doing. It feels, feels nice, I like it. So there you have it. So this is just some soapy water to get the thing to stick. There we go, do it from the outside first. Okay, so I'm lined up with that edge, which is fine. And I'm going to cut down here already. Okay, that was the easy bit. Okay. Okay, I, I really hate doing this. Oh my God. Let me grab this thing. Take it from the inside. Also the, uh, the water helps wash down any impurities that might reside. Okay, this is mildly uncomfortable, but I've known worse. Okay, so here it goes. Try not to crease it. There. In the corner. Don't worry about bubbles yet. We'll worry about that in a bit. Wasser. Okay, so now, in theory, you, you should be able to move it around and adjust to cover the entire pane, as in P-A-N-E. Yep, there we go, that's about right. Everything is covered. Now I need a special tool, which is all the way over there, of course. Hey. A little squeegee. Onto which I will spray some soapy water. There we go. And, ah, damn it. Oh, I forgot that paper. Yeah, there go my jeans. There go my jeans. Oh my god. Okay. Hi. Okay. Let's just wipe down some of the excess as it falls down. So. Okay. So we spray more of this stuff. There we go. And start squeegeeing from the middle out. Applying mild, like, yeah, like a drill. And little to no pressure. 
applying more and more pressure, and that squeezes out the uh, that squeezes out the layer of water which is under there. Now, I'm not saying this is the ultimate way to do it. A professional would certainly do it in a much better manner, but. Uh, yeah, I'm a little short on resources right now, so I have to do it myself. And yeah, and this, this is the last time I'm ever doing it. Promise. Until the next car I buy, I guess. And there's a fucking crease in there. Okay, so it's definitely far from perfect, but I can live with it. Uh, the idea basically is for people not to be able to see what's inside my car. That's all I need. Okay, so right now, don't apply too much pressure on the window, on the, uh, yeah, on whatever it is you're doing, because you could still move around the, uh, the foil, but you don't want. My God, it's full of imperfections, all the little creases. In we'll see if that dies, fades away or whatever when it dries. But, uh, yeah, that'll be it for now. Let that dry. So that concludes part one of this uh, part of this, I don't know how many series we're going to have with this uh, car because, uh, well, I haven't even registered it. It's so, so many problems. I haven't even been able to take it through MOT yet. So, uh, well, hopefully that'll be able to change soon and I'll be able to retire my uh, trusty BMW, uh, which, uh, which I still use every day, uh, even though it's uh, limping on, you know, this thing's crazy solid. I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, we'll definitely be fixing this one up in due course. I'll, I'll set it aside once um, once I retire it. And um, and this thing will be able to hopefully give me trouble free motoring once I've done everything I want to do with it. Engine's going to come out. Ch clutch is going to replace. There so so many other things that we're going to do to it. So. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you just did. Um, and I'll be catching you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Goodbye. Piece of crap. <laughs>